Welcome back, friends. I hope you're all doing well. I'm all right. Miss Mithril here. Here to tune in with story time. Today's exciting adventures we're going to go on include math skills. That'll make you super smart if you ever want to build something or think about distancing stuff. And we're going to talk a little bit about the weather. And most importantly, today is the special debut of the flowers. Oh, let's go ahead and start with that real quick. Do you remember how a couple of weeks ago we started off this series talking about spring? We went over a lot of things. Do you remember any of the things that we went over? Absolutely. Yep. We went over different kinds of flowers, colors, kinds of creatures we tend to see more in the spring that have been taking that really long nap that they took in the wintertime. Do you remember what it was called? Hibernation! That's right! Alright, without further ado, have you been wondering how those flowers that I planted are doing? Remember how messy it got with the bowl? How we had to corral it all together? Well, look at this! Here they are! You see, right after our last show, I noticed that they were starting to bloom. And I said to myself, I wish I could have shown our friends! But, like all things that grow, they go in their own time. How many do you see? Can you count them? <laughs> One, two, three. That's right. And again, these are going to be what's called dwarf sunflowers. Okay, so from now on, we are going to be watering them right before the show starts. Well, after the show starts. The show has already started. At the beginning of the show, we're going to give them some water. Now, the directions told me, do not give them too much water all the time. Just water them with a couple of sprays a day. Now, I don't have any spare spray bottles that I can use right now. So I'm just going to give a little sprinkle, pretty much whenever I think about it. And I'm going to keep them safe up here. So if you're ever curious to see how they're doing, be sure to take a peek over during the show. I'll be glad to even post pictures occasionally. we got to keep them somewhere safe, because you know who might be interested in trying to eat them? I don't know, he's a pretty smart cat, but Maelstrom might try to eat them. He's over on the window sill now. I think his ears perked up, he heard his name. But once he sees how much I'm paying attention to them and how much I'm loving and caring for them, and I'm not eating them, he'll probably get the idea that they're not food. Flowers are friends, not food. <laughs> That's how the saying goes, right? No? <laughs> oh, that was gay, Miss Smith was just being silly. All right, so <clears throat> if you would like to offer a name to give one of the flowers, see if Mommy and Daddy will help you out with a suggestion. I'd be glad to hear them. I would love to hear what you'd want to name one of the flowers. Thank you so much for helping me the other day with, well, a couple weeks ago, with making them bloom. I had such a fun time, and I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> on that note, it's a good thing that they're indoor flowers, because if we've talked about, one of the most important things that flowers need to grow is sunlight, and to a degree, warmth, because the sun is very warm, right? Well, I woke up today feeling particularly chilly around here. Brrr. Were you feeling chilly? The weather got kind of cold all of a sudden. So I asked my device to tell me what the weather was like. And they said it was chilly and it was 43 degrees outside. Can you see that okay? 43 degrees. You may have been wondering, why is Miss Mithril wearing long sleeve shirts? Because in the springtime we wear short sleeves. This is true. I live in a place that the weather tends to fluctuate. That means to change back and forth between the hot and the cold very quickly. So. I tend to put a lot of things in my closet, like long sleeves and short sleeves, so I can rotate them. Some people like to put 
a certain wardrobe away. So things that they wear in the winter, they put away in the spring and the summer. Then when spring and summer comes around, they rotate that wardrobe, take all the clothes for the spring and summer, put them away so they have more room for their clothes. <laughs> but not where I live, here in Georgia, the weather is very, very finicky. It likes to change a lot. So it went down to a 43 degrees, which means you're still able to play outside. But it's highly recommended to wear long sleeves, like this long sleeve shirt and these pants right here. And if you look up here, I even drew some little wiggly sign to indicate it is chilly. All right, so just a word of advice. Before you go outside today, check the weather. If it's around 43 degrees or if it's 50 and below, then you might want to wear something long sleeve, maybe even something lightly long sleeve like this today. All right, so <clears throat> today's story has to do with one of those creatures that we've been seeing around in the wilderness. I'm going to try to describe it and see if you can guess which animal I'm talking about. Listen carefully. They're usually brown and they have four legs like a cat. It's not a cat, but like a cat they have four legs and they have perky ears like a cat, but they're smaller than a cat. And they have a very flexible tail that likes to bounce up and down like this. And its name starts with an S, s, s sound. Any ideas? It's a squirrel. Yes. Today's story is going to teach you a little bit about what's called fractions. Now, fraction is a mathematical term for basically sharing pieces of something. And since we were talking earlier this week about sharing, we're going to segue our way into that a little bit. I'll show you what I mean. Today's story is how many ways can you cut a pie? It's a book about math. It even says so right there. Underneath those floating leaves. What's that you see in the background there? What you see? A castle! And who's in the tree with her pie? There's the squirrel. One fall day, squirrel saw this sign. Pie contest today. Signed, pig. So her neighbor, the pig, was having a pie contest. I will bake my best acorn pie for the pie contest, she said. And she did. See what all she's got going for her in her kitchen? It must be really nice to have a door opening into your kitchen like that. Oh, if you look over here next to the door, What's that sitting on that little shelf? She's got some flowers too. What ingredients do you see that she's making for her acorn pie? Of course, acorns. And she's got a mixing bowl, eggs, and it looks like she's got some sugar and flour right there. The pie was still hot when Mouse came by. Hi, said Mouse. What a fine pie! Will you cut the pie into two pieces? One half for me, one half for you. So see, the Mouse wanted a big piece of the pie, half of it to be precise. And that's what you would call one half for two people. No, said Squirrel, this pie is for the pie contest. If I win, I will share my pie with you. Ah, so Mouse has got to be a little patient because she needs the pie. Then Frog came by. 
my, said Frog, what a fine pie. Looks like Squirrel's getting all the visitors today. Do you like a corn? Oh, excuse me. Do I do like a corn pie, he said. Will you cut the pie into three pieces? How wide does he want three pieces? Yep, because there's a total of three friends that could share the pie. One piece for you, Rabbit. One for Mouse, and one for me. So the pie would be divided into three pieces. If we could do this right now. But we can't, right? Not yet. Oops. No, said Squirrel. The pie is for the pie contest. If I win, I will share my pie with you. Are you noticing what I'm noticing about their clothes? They're wearing long sleeves too, because they kind of bundle up, it's pretty chilly. The pie was still hot, so Squirrel put it in the window to cool. Oh, it looks like her friends still wanted to try out that pie. So they stuck around. The three friends went for a walk in the woods. While they were gone, Pig came by. My, said Pig, what a fine pie. Are you noticing she has something on her shirt? A bunch of little flowers. <clears throat> I will try just one little bite of pie. Very good, she said. <gasps> She's taking the pie. She didn't ask permission, did she? Oh. Then Pig ate another bite. It is just right, she said. Pig ate and ate until she cleaned the whole plate. Mm -mm. Just then, Squirrel and her friends came by. My pie, cried Squirrel. What did you eat? Why did you eat my pie? Look how dismayed she looks. Surprised and sad. Frog and Mouse are just as surprised. Oh, Mouse even looks a little cross with her, a little angry. Was your pie for my pie contest today? Asked Pig. It was, said Squirrel. Pig took something out of her pocket. Surprise! You win my pie contest, she said. Your pie was the very best. <sighs> Squirrel doesn't look like she's upset or sad anymore. How does she look? She does look surprised again, but this time surprised and happy. You can have two feelings at once. That's not fair, said Mouse. Looks like Mouse is still cross. Not fair at all, said Frog. Whoops. You ate the whole pie that we were going to share. 
Rip. I did not mean to eat the whole pie, said Pig. I will try to make things right. Pig ran outside and found more acorns. What do you think she's going to do with these acorns? I think so, too. She's going to make another one. Squirrel makes the best pies of all, said Pig. Maybe this will make, she will make one more? Squirrel did make one more. And she cut it into four pieces so everyone could share. So now that we have four friends, Pig is one, Mouse is two, Frog is three, and Squirrel is four, they each get a fourth of the pie because there are four friends. Whoops. <laughs> Let's review real quick. When you have two friends, you call it a half of a pie. When you have three friends to share a pie with, it's one third. One, thir one pie with three pieces. When you have four friends, you have one pie with four pieces. Now what if you have more than four friends? The pieces will get smaller, but you have more to share with. You have one-fifth if you have five friends. One-sixth if you have six friends. One-seventh if you have seven friends. And finally, one-eighth if you have eight friends. Now does this one make you think of something else that's round and shareable and delicious? Pizza! The next time you have pizza, before anyone touches it, count the pieces. I'd be willing to bet if it's a large pizza, it will have eight pieces. I hope you enjoyed that story, friends. Oh, next up, I'm a little concerned about what we're going. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, goodness, 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 goodness. I'm a little late now, aren't I, Shia? A little bit, but that's okay. Well, okay, did I miss the game? Did I miss the game? Oh, that was going to be part of our surprise today. Oh, no, so I didn't miss it yet? No, no, Auntie. Welcome back. <laughs> we're about to get ready for the game in just a few minutes. Oh, yeah, I didn't get a chance to listen to the story. What was the story about, friends? Can you tell me? Wow! Pizza? Uh, maybe pizza pie. Oh, it was about pie? Oh, that's fantastic! And the squirrel made it? No. <laughs> Sounds like a real treat. Absolutely, for sure. And did you bring me any pie? Is that what today's activity is? No, you know what today's activity is. I'm just pulling your strings. Says the puppet. <laughs> okay, that was kind of good. Yeah. But I don't have any strings. No, no, no. I just have a rod. Yeah, a stick. Everywhere I go, I got a stick up my hand. <laughs> no, we're going to get started with the game. Oh, oh, oh. But that game, just like the story, has squirrels. Yes, yes, it does. All right, friends, we're going to get the game set up. So stay tuned if you want to learn about this game. And uh, you know what? Let me go ahead and show you the box real quick. Okay. Um... You wanna go get the box for me? Oh, that would be swell! Right, yeah! Oh, you got it? You got it? Oh, yeah! <laughs> the game we're gonna play today is from a very cool uh, company called Peaceable Kingdom. Now, Peaceable Kingdom makes some fantastic games. A lot of my students have Peaceable Kingdom games. Maybe you have this game at home. If not, you're in for a real treat, because it also has a squirrel in it, 
and it has lots of fun little acorns that we're going to use in the game. And you can share it, just like the pieces of the pie were shared in the story. You can share how many people play it. It says right here, ages three and up. So it's recommended that people from three years old to older can play. That means grown-ups too. Between two and four players. So, give me just a minute. We're going to get set up. If you'd like to learn about more games with Peaceable Kingdom, ask Mommy or Daddy to take a look at it for you. Because there are all sorts of educational and fun games that they make that are highly accredited and considered by a lot of educational systems, including myself. I would have given them the idea at my school if they already hadn't had it already. All right, we'll see you in just a minute, okay?
Welcome back, friends. All right, we are just about set up. What a spread! Oh, this is the most liveliest tabletop game I've ever seen. It's probably the first tabletop game you've ever seen. I take that back. We did play Memory yesterday with a friend online, didn't we? Absolutely, we did! So yeah, this would be my very second. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it as much as you enjoyed the Memory game. Oh, look at this. Can you see all that? Look at that. Look at that. These are the acorns I was talking about. So you can see here, each has their own different colorful top. And there are five different colors. So, we are pretending that we are squirrels. We're going to be a squirrel now. Whew. What an age we live in. And this is our squirrel. Our sneaky, snacky squirrel. Kind of like a pair of chopsticks. If you push them together like that, he grabs onto things. See? Very carefully pick up an acorn and he could put it where it belongs. So you're pretending that you're a squirrel and you own one of the trees. So you need a certain number of acorns to fill it up. Can you count how many acorns you need? Let's take a look together. Look at that! There are all those different colored holes. How many do you see? Right, five. One, two, three, four, five. The first one that's able to fill theirs up first wins. But this is what you gotta do. Each person that takes a turn, they spin this dial right here with a little arrow. And you're looking at this end right here, it looks like a triangle. If it lands on a blue, you get a blue acorn. Same thing with red, the purple, the yellow, or the green. If it lands on this squirrel right here, this is what's called the sneaky, snacky squirrel. That means you get to choose to take any acorn you want from another friend's tree. Oh no, that doesn't sound no good. But it's one of the rules. And anyone can do it if they land on it. The number one right here with this acorn means you can pick any one acorn to put in your tree. Same thing with this number two right here. You can pick any two that you want. But watch out for the wind blowing. If it lands on this one, that means all the acorns in your tree falls out of the tree. Oh, now, 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 is that for both players or all the players or just one? Ah, uh, just the one that's spinning it. Oh, good, good. That makes me feel a little bit better. Thank you for clarifying. This one right here, oh, this means the squirrel had a rough day and he couldn't find any nuts. So that means you gotta skip your turn, sadly. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of rules here. A lot more with memory, that's for sure. But it's a good way to practice your skills. And honestly, whether you win or lose, you're still coming out stronger, especially if you choose to play with the squirrel. Now, Miss Mithril has big hands. I could easily just, you know, grab it and put it in. But, just for practice sake, because I do want my hands to get stronger, I'm going to use him. All right. <laughs> Are we ready to play Sneaky Snacky Squirrel? Yeah, absolutely. And Miss Mithril, since I since I I went I went and came and posed on your game yesterday, even though you went ahead and let me play because you're so nice like that, can you go first? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. I was actually about to offer if you wanted to go first. I'd rather let you go first since you played this before, and that way uh I can see how it runs now. Okay, Shia? All right, I'm excited. Here we go. All right, so um, which one of these do you want? Do you want this one or that one? Hmm. I'll go ahead and take that one because it's closer to me. All right. So we're going to move this over here. So this is Auntie's and this is Mithril's tree. All right, here I go. That's a good spin now. What color did Miss Mithril get? Blue. So I got to pick up one of the blue acorns. Oh, there's one right there. Come here, come here, little guy. Put it right there in the tree. Now, if you find that you're going to try this game at home, 
One thing I would like to warn you about, try not to push the pieces into these little holes here. It can wreck the pieces and it, it won't work as well anymore for people wanting to play in the future. Yeah, always take care of your toys, right, Miss Mithril? Absolutely. Oh, that was a good spin. That was a good spin, yeah. Oh, what color did I get, friends? You see it? Yeah, red. And now we both have one. The colors are different, though. Yep. My turn again. Whoops. Purple. Which one are you going to get? Mm, I think this one right here. It's a purple one. Oh, goodness. Hope some good luck comes my way. Miss Mithril is ahead of me by one. Yeah, go, 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 go. I also got a purple. It's very close, though. Any, any further than it would have had a sad day, and I wouldn't be able to get anything. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Oops, let me help you with that. Oh, thank you, thank you much, thank you. Right, my turn again. Oh no! Miss Mithril got the wind blown! Oh, I like to have fun with this one. I'll take a really deep breath, take it in. <gasps> Knock him out with my hand. <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> Alright, it's my turn. Oh, a sneaky, snacky squirrel. But you don't have any acorns anymore. I guess lucky me, huh? Yeah, talk about serendipitous. Whatever that word is. Uh, serendipitous? Yeah. Um, I, I guess so. Well, um, what do I do now? Well, we could do one of two things. I can either, uh, in hot, in tight, in di oh. I can do the house rule, which means you can spin again. But that means I get to spin later, too, if I have this kind of situation. Oh. So, friends, what do you think I should do? You think I should go with the house rule? Spin again? That means Mithril can spin again later if she needs to. It's only fair that way. Okay, I've chosen. I'm going to spin again. But if Miss Mithril ever has to spin again, too, she's going to do it, too. Right. If ever you're putting in a rule that you're making up under your house or inside your house, then you need to make sure that everyone can share the rule. All right, because that's what's fair. Absolutely. I agree. Ah, uh, yellow! Oh, do I have yellow yet? No, I do not. Let me do that. Nom, 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 nom. Let me get it for you. Thank you. Okay, two-way, two-way. All right. Put mine back in the picture a little bit. All right, here I go. Oh, I got my red back. I have a red, too. Now we both have red. All right, here I go. Oh, no. Oh, no. The horror. The wind came and blew it all out. Okay, I'm going to blow really hard. You going to help me, friends? On the count of three. We're going to huff and puff just like the big bad wolf. One, two, three. Phew. Oh, goodness me, I'm a little bummed. But that's okay, because we're still playing. Good luck, Miss Mithril. Blue. Oh, now the tables have definitely turned. I didn't move the table. It's a figure of speech. So I had three at one point, and Mithril had none. But now she's got two, and I have none. Oh, I gotta step on my game. Go, good spinner, go. Oh, he had a sad day. Oh, goodness me. Poor little sneaky, stanky squirrel, sad. I'll go ahead and go quickly so you can take your turn again. Thank you. That's so considerate, Miss Mithril. Purple. Do I have purple? No. So I gotta pick one up. What happens if it lands on one that you already have the color? That's a very good question, Auntie, and that's one that my students ask me a lot. Again, you can put in the house rule so that the person that already has that color can spin again. But it's totally up to you. And remember, when you're giving a house rule, everyone gets to share it. 
That's right, because we're not gonna hoard our house rules. We don't. Blue. Whew! I'm glad to get any color at this point. Let me see. Are there any blues? Oh, right over here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are right, you telling me, Smith? -o. Thank you. Green! Oh, goodness! It's getting really close for you now, isn't it? Yes, it is. Boop! Uh-oh. Let me just stick that in there. This one's having a hard time because a friend did push it in and I had to put some tape on it. I almost didn't see it. You know what? I totally didn't see it either. But usually when something's broken in the game, you can fix it. What's that on? What's that on? It's almost on the line, but... I, oh, I can pick any one I want? That's right. Oh, go, okay, go, go. What color do you guys think I should get? That's a good idea. I'll pick red because Miss Mithril has red too. Oh, goodness. I thought it was called an egg roll, not an acorn roll. <laughs> oh, any two that I want, but I only need one. So. <gasps> Oh, near goodness, goodness me! Oh, gosh! <laughs> it looks like Miss Mithril has won! Oh, that was a lot of fun, though. Oh, goodness me! Oh, well, good good game, Miss, J Miss Mithril. Good game, buddy. Absolutely. So, I may not have won, but that's okay, because guess what I still have? My smarts right up here. Now I know how to play this game, and next time I can play it even better! <laughs> Not to mention, it's... That's the great thing about games, is you can always play them over and over and over until you get better at it. And then you get to go up against other people and share with them. And then you both get better! <laughs> That's the joy of playing games. Absolutely, you said it. Stay tuned, friends. We'll be back in just a minute so we can finish up with our story. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'll be as excited as I am, friends, about the story because, uh, Miss Mithril really likes the title. You'll see why. <sighs> sure was a fun game, huh? I wonder if you noticed my earrings today. Not that I'm just going out all over the place being like, look at my earrings, look at my earrings. But I am kind of proud of them. 
They were made with love from a very special friend of mine, another teacher as well. She's very good at making earrings. And she made these little pink squids just for me. Would you like to see? So she reused some paper clips, some silly old googly eyes, and a little bit of cardboard and paint and made this squid. <laughs> Kinda looks like one of those dancing puppets though, huh? I really appreciated it when she made that for me. It made me feel loved. Now, for today's folk story, we are going to read a story called Mango Mountain. <laughs> Auntie said that I would be excited. I am because my favorite fruit is mangoes. I totally love them. They're so sweet, but if you pick them just right, you can make them a little sweet and a little sour, and together they can taste really good that way. All right, let's get started. Oh, good, there is a picture. Yeah, one picture. All righty. In the province of Surin, there is an unusual mountain. Some people says it looks like Irawan, the three-headed elephant of the god Indra. They say Indra put the mountain there to remind the people of how important elephants were for them. Without elephants, they could never have sold any of the big trees they cut down in the forests. But other people in Surin tell another story about the mountain. Many hundreds of years ago, they say, a man and his wife lived in a forest. The wife was always saying to her husband, Now you do this, or now you do that. And then she would say, you never do anything I tell you. You are the laziest man alive. The poor man tried to please his wife, but he never could. He would not have finished one thing before she had told him to do three other things. He tried not doing anything at all, but this only made his wife angrier and she would hit him. Then he tried working as hard as he could, only to find that his wife could always think of more things for him to do. He tried to give her orders, but she only laughed at him. Finally, he came to believe that she was a witch, and he thought, Unless I get rid of my wife, I shall go mad. So he went to her and said, I am tired of listening to you telling me what to do. I am tired of listening to your voice, and I am tired of you. So I am going to marry another woman. She will be kind and beautiful, and she will not always say, Now you do this, or now you do that, or you're the laziest man alive. His wife simply did not believe him when he said this. She fell down laughing. She thought, he is so lazy that he will never leave his home. He is so dumb that he can never find his way out of this forest into town. But one day, the man did leave his home, and he went into the town to find a new wife. He thought, I will have to be very clever. My old wife will follow me. She will drag me back to the forest before she will let me marry again. Perhaps if I hid, she will not find me, and she will go away. Then I can marry. When I marry, I will return to my old house. My first wife will not be there, for she will still be looking for me. Then at last I will have peace and happiness. But his first wife did not leave the house. She thought, he will return. And after three months of hiding, the man was worried. Where is my wife? Why hasn't she come here? I know she wouldn't want to stay in the forest alone. She must have gone looking for me in another part of the land. He decided he would marry and return home. He was very surprised when he came near his house and saw his first wife waiting for him. But he thought, well, at least my second wife is kind and beautiful. I can ignore my first wife completely. And at first his second wife was very kind to him. But she saw the first wife and how she how she spoke to the man. And she saw that to get anything done, you almost had to beat him. And after a few weeks, she was shouting at her husband, just as the first wife had did. If the man had been unhappy with one wife, he was wretched with two. Not only did the two wives quarrel with him day and night, and tell him, now you do this, or now you do that, 
But when one wife said, now you do this, the other said, now you do that. And even worse, they both said, you are the laziest man alive. Finally, they began to fight with each other. The poor man did not know what to do. All I want is a little peace, he said to himself. But he had no peace, and he spent all of his time thinking about how he could solve his problem. And soon he died worrying about it. You see, there, there's a picture today. I guess there's always a picture. There are the two wives, bossing him around, telling him what to do. You see the m mountains in the distance? After he was dead, his two wives stopped fighting with each other. They had not been kind to their husband while he was alive, but now that he was dead, they were both unhappy. They realized that they really did love their husband, and they decided that they could not live without him. So they went to the body of the dead man, and as they leaned over his head, they both died. When the god Indra saw that, he decided to help people to remember the story. He made a mountain that has three peaks leaning in towards each other. It looks like the wives leaning over the head of the dead husband. For an Indra said, When people see this mountain, they will not forget this foolish man and his two wives. But many people did forget the story. Some say the mountain looks like Erewhon, the three-headed elephant. Others have thought the mountain looks like a mango, and they call it Mango Mountain. In Saran, it is very difficult to choose names for mountains. The end. Oh, it didn't really have anything to do with mangoes at all, did it? Oh, well. So, the husband made a choice to try to go get a new wife when the first one didn't treat him very well. If someone's not being nice to us, is that what we do? Sometimes we go out and we find another friend or find someone else to be kind to us that will appreciate us. And honestly, it might not always turn out the way you want it or expect it, but it's okay to try to strive to be happy. And that's all this man really wanted before it made him not feel well. And he couldn't share with both of them at all anymore. And then they discovered just how much they missed him when he was gone. And it's a rough lesson, but they say that sometimes you really don't know what you have until it's gone. That sure was the case with these two wives. Do you think they should have been nicer to their husband? Yes. I agree. Oh, well. All right, guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for joining me here today. Auntie and I had a great time with you, and can't wait to see you for our next lineup of activities for next week. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>